You're giving me a broken back, a heart attack, a surely crack. You're digging me an early grave, I'm up to leave before I'm back. But for a love like what you've got, you know that I'll do it. And for a love like what you've got, I'll keep on We're here on the Grand Canal, leaving Salins on the way to Digby Bridge. And the 144 kilometres of the Grand Canal, I suppose it forms one of the longest nature reserves in Ireland, albeit a very narrow one. And it is a wonderful environment for a whole range of natural heritage, natural flora and fauna. And it's very often when you meet, when water meets dry land, that's when you get the most variety of species, the greatest diversity if it be a sea coast or an inland water, fresh water. And here we get um, water birds as well as land birds and tree birds, if you want to call them that. I suppose typical birds you'd see along the Grand Canal would be the grey heron. And he's very easily recognised, standing almost uh, a metre and a half tall. And he fishes for all kinds of aquatic animals, but also mammals. He's been known to take uh, bank voles and rats and things like that. And you also might find mallards nesting along the reed beds. Not that many because there is quite a bit of disturbance along canals nowadays with uh, roads, greenways, and also you will find little grebe in the winter. More in the summertime they will go for open waters, lakes, um, but in the winter they will definitely come here and disperse as small family groups, diving little birds after uh, aquatic insects and some vegetation. Two other birds you may find along the canal are uh, coot and water hen, or moor hen as uh, is the correct term for it. And the coot is a small black bird with a, a baldy head and the bald is the coot, that's where the phrase comes from. And the, the moor hen is uh, a little bit smaller and uh, very similar in colour and habitat, but they, they try to keep out of each other's way. Now, along this stretch of the Grand Canal, there used to be um, regular sightings of moorhen, but the last few years they become scarcer and scarcer. And there could be a number of reasons for that. One of them being the, um, the appearance of the American mink along this stretch of the canal, which uh, has been sighted by uh, several people, and quite often. And it is, um, I suppose, uh, an amphibious type of animal. He, he's just as happy in the water as on land, and is known to predate all kinds of uh, flora and uh, for fauna around here. So an easy prey would be moorhen eggs in the nest, moorhen chicks, for that matter. 
I have seen them myself slinking through the reeds at the side of the canal. And unless you are watching really, really carefully, you could miss him because he makes only the slightest little ripple, even on a calm day. So he, he hunts by stealth. And he is, um, I suppose, an escapee from a mink farm. And the mink, they were not all black as the ones we see today. They're practically uh, jet black. They would have been different colors, but in the wild, they returned back to their uh, darker color. And in 1961, I believe, was uh, when they first escaped into the Irish countryside. And they haven't uh, gotten a good reputation since, I have to say, killing all in their path, as some people will say. And there may be some truth in that, because they are known to cache or store food for the rainy day. So they will kill more than they can eat there and then, unlike perhaps um, other native species. And, and so the mink is, is, is part of our, our landscape today. It's almost impossible by most people's accounts to eliminate it. And I think efforts will be futile and extremely costly. So I suppose it's one of those exotic invasive species that we will have to learn to live with, like many other exotic, uh, exotic invasive species that we have today. And amongst them are plants, of course. There's 30 something uh, invasive exotic plants. I suppose uh, we, we're familiar with Japanese knotweed along the side of the road. Um, giant hogweed will be another one. And, um, and these plants, the giant hogweed, we have a hogweed, a native plant, but a giant hogweed can go to two, three, four meters high. It can be very dangerous because if you happen to touch that with your skin and the sun shines on you, ultraviolet light, it can result in a very bad burn, which may not uh, leave for a long time. It may not be very difficult to heal. Himalayan balsam is another one of those invasive exotic plants. And this is becoming more and more evident in Ireland today, especially along waterways and wet patches in Ireland. It is a beautiful plant. It's a delightful flower, but it is very strong and able to dominate over native species. Um, when its seed pods are ready, the seed pods can actually explode and spread the seeds seven meters, up to seven meters. And of course, if that's near water, they can be carried further. And so it goes on and on. And today we have along long stretches, particularly of the Blackwater, and I saw it recently in Lismore, um, large stretches of the bank covered in uh, Himalayan balsam. Now, it's a pretty plant. Uh, the danger is that it may attract pollinators away from our native plants, maybe. But uh, in the winter, when it dies back, it, it leaves the banks um, bare and open to erosion. So the, um, we're looking at problems down the road on that. As for the bird life here, well, you know, being a little con connected corridor, 144 kilometers long, it does give a lot of these passerine birds, perching birds, songbirds, a great um, foothold in the countryside. Whereas it's, it's not going to get interrupted between here and wherever it ends. And so birds can move up and down. Also butterflies can use this as a corridor. And this time of the year, we're likely to see speckled wood, which we just saw uh, back there at the uh, Leinster Aqueduct. You will see a lot of um, small tortoise shells and red admirals around this time of the year. We're coming to the end of the butterfly season, of course many other seasons as well. And some birds will actually use this canal as a conduit to move from A to B. I have noticed that uh, collared doves fly up and down the Grand Canal here, foraging or going from A to B. <clears throat> the, um, a lot of the birds, we can hear birds in the background singing now, and that's the, the robin, but you will get all kinds of songbirds here. Uh, the blackbird, the thrush, the bullfinch, the, um, the greenfinch, very common here in the spring when they are more noticeable because of their song. And in the wintertime, you will have uh, feeding off the berry uh, forming bushes and trees, and particularly ivy. You will have the winter thrushes coming in from Scandinavia, the red wings and the field fairs. 
So there's always something to see along here. Now, the cormorant, a very big black predatory bird eating fish, is common up and down the Liffey, but it can also be seen on the canal. It's not one I've seen commonly, I have to say, but it, uh, it is present here. There are three other birds along this stretch of the canal that are quite interesting. Um, the kingfisher, I suppose, is uh, well known to most people. A beautifully coloured bird, flash of blue, very difficult to see and hear, except with the trained eye. But he is up and down this canal and he will perch on the side of the bank on an overhanging twig and watch for little minnows to pass by and dive in and catch them underneath the water. Um, another bird that you will see around the locks and the bridges is the grey wagtail. The grey wagtail looks like our little willy wagtail, the black and white wagtail we see in our front yard or in car parks or schools or that, that type of place. But he has a grey back and a yellow tummy. And he nests in holes in the walls and he likes to live near water, be it uh, a fast running stream or, sorry, oh doc, I missed it, sorry. Um, he likes to fish beside uh, water because he likes the aquatic insects that come from the, uh, that hatch out of the water. But he can stay around all year long. So somehow or other in the winter time, he can also find insects and invertebrates to eat. The, um, if I could say a little word about the roach again, come back to the roach, the fact that he is um, our probably most populous fish in Ireland, freshwater fish in Ireland. Any fishing competition today worth its salt will have big bags of roach. There will be little else to catch. Very often the first fish a, a young boy or girl might catch in their life is a roach. And in terms of tourism, fishing tourism, very big in Ireland up to this year, um, it would be roach fishing which would attract a many, many people. And it's, it's, it's one of the great things about roach is easy to catch, right? Back in the 80s, before it really had proliferated all over the country, the, um, there were big bags up in the urn catchment area caught up to 100 kilos in a day per rod. Not, not by the whole group, by one person. They were catching them at six a minute, every 20 seconds. So as fast as you could put the bait out, boom. And, and so this is entertainment. Now, of course, along this river, Waterways Island, uh, and, uh, you know, say you can fish, you don't need a permit, but please catch and release, catch and release. And that's, the, that's why it, it becomes uh, sustainable for other people to fish every day throughout the season that there's a fish there to be caught. And ideally, that is done with barbless hooks. So if you have a barb on a hook, file it off, or just buy the barbless hooks to begin with. And very often, uh, I suppose, maggots, sometimes colored red, purple are used. Dough. dough is very popular. <laughs> I, I personally have had success with cheese, small piece of cheese, um, and earthworms. Um, and they used to put cotton wool in the dough. Where it wouldn't sail oh yes! Off the oh yeah! Something to <laughs> bind it onto the hook. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking along the canal bank, and you know, really the the, the flowers have um, the, the wild flowers have gone over to a large extent. But I I've seen water mint, common flea bane, meadow sweet, meadow buttercup, tufted fetch, uh, woundwort. So there's still quite a few wildflowers out there to enjoy. And of course, we have dragonflies all up and down the length, still on the 21st of September. And they're even mating at this point. So it's a haven of wildlife, this Grand Canal. And it's here for everybody to enjoy.